Yeah. No shame for TSM this weekend uh, in the Immortals First Light event, uh, which was really the first time I guess we were able to see top-level competition with no content creators involved. We have seen TSM in action, and uh, to Myth's credit, we talked about it last week. He did terrific in the showing that he was with the uh, the TSM squad and Twitch rivals, but now we were really able to see teams play uh, in the, against each other the way that we would see them compete in major, major tournaments. So Immortals First Light happened, and uh, TSM are your winners. And now we're asking the question, Tyler, uh, is it, is it, have we seen, I mean, it's still very early, but have we seen enough to say that TSM are the team to beat and they are, as, as we sit right now, the best team in NA? Like, if I was making a power rankings right now, if there was an official Fion, Fire, Valorant, North American power rankings, I would, I have to put TSM first. They cleaned up this weekend. They won the DTS 10K Invitational. They won the Myrtle's First Light Tournament. They won the CLG Blitz Cup Tournament. The only tournament they didn't win in this last, you know, string of days was the Pittsburgh Knights Invitational Tournament Series, where they actually fell, like, weirdly. Like, they didn't even make the finals, not even the semifinals. They, they lost to Together We Are Terrific, which is a very good amateur team, and another amateur team in uh, China Win. Uh, one of your favorite teams, Ardo, uh, Som leading that squad. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Som, you know, popping off maybe, you know, a, one of the, you know, players or people are looking at right now to sign to a uh, Tier 1 organization. There's a lot of, you know, murmurings about he's he could be picked up very soon. What, what do you think is taking so long with Som? It, 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 I think it's the thing that the, a lot of these teams very much want Counter-Strike pros uh, highly, like, f pro switching over from Counter-Strike. So, Som, he was very good in Counter-Strike. I believe he was global elite, but he's obviously, he's known for his Fortnite background. So, he has less, he has to prove himself somewhat, right? Where he mm. has to go into these trials. He's been trialed by various teams. But I do think he's performed so well in almost every single tournament he's played in that he should either... China win should be picked up as a five stack and go to a tier one organization or some himself should be picked up and placed on one of these building orgs who are building out their team, like a hundred thieves, maybe uh, someone else's team. There's, there's rumors of, you know, phase. I know RNG is out there, team liquid. So there's teams possibly that could pick up Psalm and build a team around him, but I do think Psalm was a player everyone should be watching out for. But for TSM themselves, yes, we should call them number one for now. The only argument would be T1. T1's only played one tournament. They won that tournament, but it was Twitch Rivals. It was a semi-serious tournament where TSM was in the final, but with Myth. Hayes is the shot caller for TSM, and they're much better of Hayes in the lineup. So I really do want to see the TSM T1 matchup. We will hopefully see that next weekend at the T1 yep. Ignition Invitational, the pretty much the first big major uh, Valorant tournament with pro teams involved. So that's what I'm circling. I want that T1 TSM matchup. That is the final or the the series that everyone wants to see. Yeah, I, I would say that like until we see T1 play more, I don't want to make the decisive call that TSM's the best team. I th I think I mean. From a raw skill perspective, I think everyone... There are some arguments here and there that you can make in favor of some of the players on TSM, like Wardell, but I, I generally think across the board, from a raw skill perspective, that the, the T1 team is better than the TSM team, and we just haven't seen enough of them play in, in real tournaments, which is uh, exciting, like with the Ignition series and everything else. I, I hope uh, with I, I hope TSM is in this this T1 event. I would imagine they are, and I hope that they get to uh, I hope they get to play actual T1 team as well, uh, presumably because I think that that's sort of the barometer I'm looking for, and we haven't seen that yet. So I'm I am uh, not so quick to call TSM the best team in North America yet uh, without seeing them play against uh, T1. One uh, thing I, about TSM that I really like on uh, my kind of my final thoughts on TSM is I do think. Out of all the teams I've seen, they are the ones, I think them and Fish123 are the teams that most recognize their identity. They have found their identity, where there is a three-headed monster on attack. They have Drone, who plays Phoenix. He's the Phoenix main, best Phoenix in the world. He plays Phoenix all the time. He makes it work where other players are playing other duelists. He's the best Phoenix in the world. Please watch him if you are aspiring Phoenix. He's amazing. You have Wardell, obviously. 
the the hard carry of the team on his jet, on his Sova, and then you have Subroso. Those three players on any given game, those guys you could expect a thirty bump from one of them. Most likely Wardell, but Drone and Subroso both have their games where they'll just pop off. And then you have Hayes and Cutler on the Sage and Cipher, where they're not gonna put up the twenty kills you know, regularly. They'll they'll have a 20-kill game here or there, but those two are kind of the anchors. They're the veterans. They know their roles, and they're amazing. And when it comes down to it, they're the cleanup crew. They are very much playing that sentinel role. They're playing the lurker. They're playing, you know, Sage as a defensive character, and it works. They Everyone on this team knows their role, and that's something that I can't say about a lot of teams currently in Valorant, where I still think teams are figuring out their identity. Like, I still think T1 mechanically might be better than TSM, but TSM definitely has the chemistry and the coordination and definitely the identity of what they want to do each and every single game that makes them my number one team right now. So, shout out to TSM. Subroza had a great tournament, particularly mm. in the final. Uh, I have said this on Twitter. Wardell is my favorite player to watch yes. right now. I just think he's he's very creative. Yeah. Like, there was one play where he was on a box on a... He was covered in, like, the, the opposing Brimstone didn't know that he covered Wardell in smoke as a Sova. And he was using his abilities to basically herd three or four of the opponents into the same spot so he could shock dart them. And then, you know, he almost got a four, he almost got a 4K back to back to back to back just from his, like, herding skills. It was incredible. I, th I thought that he did a great job with the drone and, or the shock darts, the drone, and then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the recon and then shooting. Like, and he shot within the smokes, which is incredible. A uh, little bit great. of... Yeah. Amazing. And, and you've called him the best uh, op player out there right now. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I, I, I think it's between, it's two between two players, between two players right now. We'll see, we'll see how Skadoodle does, right? Skadoodle's still getting used to the team. I still think T, I mean, Brax is amazing on the operator. A lot of the T1 players can play the operator, and I think that's more of the identity thing, right? We'll see as games and series go along, and as those five learn their identities on the team, who really becomes the main number one operator on the team. But right now, in NA, it's either Tens or it's Wardell. And this weekend, Wardell did get the W, but that might more be because of the team around Wardell, and less so around the team around Tens. And we can get into that like right now, I believe. Yeah, we will in a second. Uh, I do have some capital J journalism to report here. Mm. Um, I did send a DM to Wardell, um, as we all know, uh, there is a meme whenever he's playing in Twitch chat. Uh, people spam the just letting everybody know that Wardell is outside his Scarborough home in a Mercedes AMG class vehicle. And I have gotten confirmation from a source that this is a Drake song called Time Flies. Uh, that Wardell allegedly is not able to use on his stream oh. in fear of a uh, DMCA, DMCA, <laughs> DMCA claim. Feels, <laughs> so, feels bad. Feels bad. So this is this is all uh, according to sources, mm. uh, and I, I will try to double check that for oh. you. May might may not have been Wardell. Okay, so let's talk about Tens and Friends. Uh, mm. Tens is great. What He's amazing. Fr what about Friends? Uh. The some of the friends are good. Some of the friends, some of the friends are good. Uh, I don't want to say all the friends are bad, but I do want to say the first match they had versus Mixup, and I had Mixup as the eighth team going into the main tournament of first uh, first light. And after the tournament was all over, I saw many comments comparing uh, a tens to LeBron James on the Cavaliers, the the bad Cavaliers days. I saw one person no. call him Latenz James. And I think Latenz oh, James <laughs> really does signify kind of, at least in this tournament. In That's this good. tournament, he was Latenz James, where he was putting up, he was putting up a 40 bomb. A 40 bomb versus mix-up. He had, he had a combat score of a 480. 480. A 400 game, you are out of your mind. A 480 is almost unheard of. Especially in, that's, that's like a, that's like a, a mortal player playing against Arda. That is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that so is. Lose. Yeah, it. Uh, <laughs> I, I. I think looking at the C9 or the possible C9 roster, right? I do want to update that. The so they had the tens of friends, the possible C9 roster. The one person that wasn't there was Infinite. And from what I've heard from some sources, not Ordell, like artist source, <laughs> but actual sources that Infinite apparently has just quit Valorant. He he just was like, I want to go play CSGO. I like CSGO better. 
piece out. So it does. It at least I believe Infinite just kind of left them on short notice, and they had to put Vice in the lineup on very very short notice. So they had two days of practice with Vice. So that's one of the reasons why they look so shaky. But they did. It's really hard, right? Because you're looking at TSM, you're looking at T, uh, a T1, and then you have Tens, Latens, James, and you're like, if you could just put some good, if you got a Corey in there, right, or a Psalm right next to Latens, James, then maybe you can have a championship roster. But Tens can't do it all, right? This game isn't. You can carry a far away in Valorant, but I don't think Latens, James is going to grab you know any major championship if he doesn't have a more solid roster around him. Jacob, you hear anything about uh, Latenz James getting some backup here? Maybe a Kevin Love here or there? Maybe uh, maybe a, a, a other players? I mean, there was a lot of talk around Corey and Cloud9, from my understanding, but I haven't heard anything new on that in a couple weeks, so I'm sort of curious what will shake out. I will say, like, I hope that Relics figures this out, because he's someone that, like, I dealt with a lot in Counter-Strike, and he's, like, genuinely a nice dude, and, a, and I think has some potential as a player as well. He didn't Counter-Strike, and he, he never really could achieve, uh, I think, what he was after. But, I mean, yeah, I think to Tyler's point, if you look at someone like Corey, that makes a lot of sense, and I, like... I don't know. It, it, I, I'm very confused as to why like Cloud9 sort of just like barely stepping their toe in it. I think that they're this is spec informed speculation. Uh, I I will say that, but I I think based off a conversation I had, uh, an interview I had with Monte Cristo a few days ago, now the commissioner of Flashpoint and uh, vice president of Brand at B site. Seemed, he seemed very gung ho that they would like to that that organization B site would like to put together some sort of Valorant tournament. Um, that that he was very personally interested and in, they as a business were interested in doing so. If B site were to get a, a license to run a Valorant tournament, especially in the Ignition series, I don't see a world where every team in there doesn't adopt a permanent. Every partner team doesn't adopt a Valorant. Uh, squad and so that'd be like team envy it'd be mad lions that would be uh immortals already has there so it'd yes. be like cloud nine yeah it'd be fun plus phoenix um just sort of they, the entire list of people in there um but i've been a little bit as confused as to why cloud nine has not really made it official jump other than tens um because there are some players out there but i don't know right like there's only just so many players that are worth worth your investment um and sort of taking the flyer on, right? Like, Sentinels hasn't done as well as I think a lot of us may have thought they would have, and they, they made some real big flyers in, in this scene. So, um, I don't know if Cloud9's waiting to take sort of the more developmental approach and find younger people and sort of build them up, or if they want to go out and be big spenders. But they've been very slow about it, as of right now. Imagine uh, <laughs> Latenz James brings in Corey and Psalm just like LeBron and Chris yeah. Bosh and Dwayne oh, Wade, yeah. and the three of them take their talents to C9. And That'd be great. Sudden... They'd be very strong. <laughs> and I, I do think about the C9 roster is that, like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to just thrash the entire team, too. Uh, uh, you know, they did play very well. Like, Mitch had some games. Uh, uh, Shinobi is the shot caller, right? So you're not expecting him to put up amazing numbers. Vice had a lot of rough, uh, rough moments on Cipher. He had a few clutch moments, but mostly a rough day. So I do think it's maybe. I don't think they have to overhaul the entire roster. I do think Vice maybe. You know, they do it, give him some more time, give him some more trial practice. But I do think they still need that secondary impact player next to yeah. Tens. That can, like, TSM, you look at TSM, You, I just said, they have the three-headed monster of Wardell, Sabrosa, and Drone. If Wardell's not having the best, <clears throat> if Wardell's not having the best game, you have Sabrosa and Drone to fall back on. If you're T1, Brack is obviously the main carry. He's the guy. He's the ace of the team. But if he's not doing well, look at, you, I mean, you have AZK, you have Skadoodle, yeah. even, you know, Crashies and Food. Mm -hmm. They they can all put up amazing, you know, numbers. And then you look at C9, and you're like, they, they, Latin James deserves to be up there with the Wardells and Braxes skill wise. I think those three are probably the best right now in North America, but you need that set, you need that consistent number two player on the team. I don't know if it's Mitch, I don't know if it's anyone else on the team, but if you got a Corey or a Psalm that could slide right next to Latin James and play off of him and be there when, you know, Tens isn't, you know, finding all his shots, then C9 is a team that T1 and TSM have to watch out for.